Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be doing a brief comparison between two different recording applications that you can use for recording videos, streaming to YouTube or Twitch, and the like. You've, there's a good chance you've heard of one of them if this interests you at all. So the two we're doing today is OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, which is the one I primarily use, and XSplit Broadcaster, uh, the premium version. I recently got a three-month uh, but kind of like free trial of that from the Humble Bundle. And um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the differences here today. So uh, you can see pretty clearly that on both of the screens, they serve most of the same purposes. You're going to have the same kind of options menus, um, the ability to see a preview of what you're recording before you actually start recording. Uh, and then the bottom left of both, the ability to set up scenes. So if you don't already know, a scene would be kind of like a, a single recording setup, and then you add the different sources in. For OBS, that's under sources, and here it's just this uh, box right below the scene selection. So um, you can choose from different sources, and uh, for the most part, they're the same in both programs. What you would kind of want, game capturing, which uh, one of the things OBS, I think, does a little better, is that uh, you can select from this menu, Rather than having to go into OBS and right clicking and then going to game capture and then having to select the game from uh, <laughs> this kind of gigantic menu. So you would go down to capture specific window and then you have to select the window. Overall, I just think uh, the way XSplit is doing that is a lot smoother where you would just kind of go up here and it would already recognize whatever game you're playing like Hearthstone. And it gets added down here to the list. Um, so you can see, of course, you can uh, modern. You can change your microphone settings and your desktop audio settings, which is kind of the sound of all your games or whatever you have been recording. Uh, you got the same kind of thing going on here inside of XSplit uh, volume range. You can mute that, of course, and the system sounds as well. And then open the audio settings up for some changes. Now, uh, one thing I do want to point out, and I think this is a good thing, is that in XSplit, um, silence detection is kind of automated, whereas in OBS it's possible to do so, but you do have to actually know how to set up a filter. So uh, silence detection would be kind of where the microphone stops listening until it actually until the audio levels that are hitting the microphone reach a certain threshold. So if you're not talking, it's not going to record the background noise. Now, uh, since you're probably interested in that right now, I'll show you in OBS. You go ahead and set that up by going to the settings of the microphone, and then you would add in a noise gate audio filter with similar settings to what you see here below. Um, very possible to do the same in both, but I think that the way XSplit does it is smoother because that's really not obvious to a new user of OBS. Okay. Ah, so OBS also, and uh, not OBS, sorry, XSplit also has a built-in video editor, and you can edit and upload to uh, YouTube from basically straight within XSplit. So as you're recording your videos, they're going to have an output folder, which you can access with tools, recordings, and then you can edit those whenever you want by going to Express Video Editor. Uh, now I don't currently have any... Um, basically videos to go ahead and edit here at the moment, but um, you get the idea. You, you can edit the clips, you can cut between them, um, watch the basic tutorial for more information, and then uh, you can basically up, uh, upload into OBS, uh, upload into YouTube when you're done with that. So um, I, from experience, the XSplit Broadcaster Express Video Editor it's pretty simplistic, though, I do have to say. Um, kind of the functionality you're limited to is not great, uh, especially if you're used to tools like Adobe Premiere uh, or even Kaden Live, which is free on Windows now. Um, it's, it's simplistic. But if you're just trying to do a couple quick cuts or maybe to just take a specific segment like a highlight video and upload that to YouTube, then it might be enough for you. Uh, it's cool that it's there nonetheless. Okay. Account synchronizing. So um, I noticed this when I logged in today, of course, because I, I did have an Xbox Broadcaster account and I only recently uh, redownloaded and upgraded it. But uh, in your accounts, uh, as long as you're logged in, it's going to save some of your output things. So you can see I can upload to uh, basically two of my channels right here and I have settings that I save 
uh, a long time ago, and I would just go in there and edit them if I need to, but if I need to output to a specific stream, I can just kind of select from one of these. And that's cool that um, basically your information gets carried over with your account rather than on each computer. Uh, if you're changing operating systems a lot or reformatting or that kind of thing because you blow up your computer too much, um, and then that's kind of a cool thing because you won't have to redo your settings. They'll always be kind of out there on the cloud on their servers, which is nice. Um, all right. So um, in XSplit Broadcaster, you do have more scene transitions. You can see here uh, scene transitions in OBS basically limited to cut and fade by default. That's fine. So you want to transition between the different scenes. You can just kind of click on them and you can have them do a cut or fade transition. And OBS, you have a similar uh, option. There's a lot more transitions though, which is nice, especially if you're trying to have a slightly more professional stream going on, that'll be good. And also I think that the way they have uh, the scenes organized over here as buttons um, would make it a little bit easier to control manually rather than doing it uh, by clicking on the list over here in OBS. More of a personal preference than anything really. Um, now, one thing you can do, and both of these programs have it, of course, is the ability to set up hotkeys. So if we go into settings, hotkeys, uh, you can just do shift to or alt to or whatever you want to be able to switch between the different scenes. And that's probably the more wise way to do it anyway. Um, but I prefer the buttons if you just had to compare those straight up. Okay, uh, next up, presentation packager. Okay, so this is a pretty cool tool. Uh, the presentation packager. So you set up uh, basically how you want your scenes, and then you can export your presentation, basically uh, all the different sources that you're gonna be using for your presentation and the other settings. And you can save that as a .bet or P-R-E-S file on your desktop. So if you wanna be able to basically bring your settings uh, for a specific scene over to your friend's house or to a different computer, uh, that's going to be a pretty useful tool. I haven't seen anything like that in OBS, so that's a definite plus for XSplit Broadcaster. Okay, one more thing I actually like a lot about XSplit Broadcaster as opposed to OBS is up here you'll see the ability to actually change your resolution straight from within the main interface of XSplit Broadcaster. So we can drop down to all of the standard video formats like 720p, 480p, and uh, basically modify our output for the video right then and there. In OBS, you can of course do that, but it's a little bit trickier because you have to select your profile, go down to settings, go to output, uh, not output, video rather, uh, set the base canvas resolution and the output resolution, scaled resolution. And that's fine, I mean, it works, but uh, kind of for a setting that you might wanna change quite a bit, navigating between 720p and 180p, I think it's a lot better that they put that there. Um, okay, so uh, one other thing that you can do in XSplit Broadcaster that I notice, and you might be able to do it in OBS, but I don't see an immediate way to do that, is outputs projector. So if you have a projector and you want to put your video up there on the screen, uh, you can do that within OBS. So you project to basically um, any active screen that you have hooked up to the computer. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a projector. It can just basically any screen. So you can see here if I project this to the screen, uh, so like wow test, uh, that, that's gonna be popping up on this screen right here. XSplit Broadcaster also has a built-in plugin store. Now there are plugins for OBS and I've used a couple of them, but usually they're basically on the forum posts for OBS and uh, a little bit tricky to find. I, I mean, I wouldn't really say, <laughs> That's not true. Like, if you know about the forums and you go and you look them up and you're that geeky where you're willing to put in like half an hour plus just to look up, uh, to see what else is possible with an OBS, then you can find the plugins there. But the plugin store in XSplit is pretty cool. And I think it's the kind of thing that most people would be more interested in rather than going through forum posts. So basically you can see all the plugins that XSplit has straight within here and you can click on them and you can download them and it's just a much more streamlined process. Um, it, it's how installing plugins in this day and age probably should be done. Um, of course, you know, that, that said, OBS is kind of more of a uh, 
free time project and not so much a commercial one. Um, because XSplit Broadcaster, if you do want all the features, it, it is uh, basically paid. So that, that's one of the main downsides of XSplit Broadcaster for sure. Uh, though they do have a free version, and I'm sure a lot of this stuff does come with that. Um, so last plus for XSplit Broadcaster is going to be that they have built-in tutorials, which obviously as a channel that basically solely does tutorials, I think is both cool and also kind of limits how much I can really talk about XSplit Broadcaster without being redundant. So you got the manual there, which will open up on the web, and you also have um, video tutorials, of course. So with video tutorials, you can watch them on YouTube. Got a lot of different uh, tutorials going on here, 24, so that's pretty nice. And uh, you can read through the manual to basically learn all of the basics as well. Uh, and, and that's cool and all. Now, in um, OBS, you can, of course, visit the website. You got um, fan-made tutorials, like there's some on my channel as well. Uh, and if you go read up the documentation, it does exist, and it is, for the most part, clear enough. Um, I, I, I would say it's written in a little bit more of a technical way. Um, but yeah, there is documentation for OBS, so it's not like you'll be totally lost there. And now for one of the downsides of Exploit Broadcaster, if you actually go and check your recording settings, you'll notice that there's actually only two video formats that you can output to from within Exploit Broadcaster. Now, FLV and MP4, I will say that in OBS, those are definitely the two I use the most, so the other four might be redundant, but it's kind of surprising to me. Um, in OBS, you have uh, all these other video formats, so MP4, FLV, .move, .mkv, those are formats that do exist, and I've seen them quite a bit. And then uh, these weird ones, TS and M3U8 down there, never used those before, but it's kind of a weird thing, because it's like, yeah, this is a free program, but then for some reason, Exploit Broadcaster doesn't have as many uh, video outputs. Just seems a little weird to me. Um, but hopefully this gives you kind of a walkthrough of some of the advantages of using Exploit Broadcaster over OBS. And you can clearly see that they both serve more or less the same purposes. Um, maybe for professional uses when you have all the extra plugins that are available to you with XSplit Broadcaster. If you're really serious about streaming, um, it might be worth it for you. What I would say is kind of a next step is go check out the plugin store. Uh, see if the plugins are going to be the kind of thing you want. They have some for games like StarCraft. Um, so if you're looking for something that you can add to your screen, you might find what you need there. That said, in OBS, you can also pretty easily integrate with other third-party services. So if you want to do the Twitch alerts thing, uh, that's fully doable within OBS. So you can get most of what you want out of OBS that you can get out of Exploit Broadcaster. But hopefully I've given you a decent idea of some of the pluses and the negatives of these two different applications. So without further ado, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this video on OBS and XSplit Broadcaster, a comparison, and I will see you guys in my future video content.